I've gone through a couple doublings in the price of Edmonton homes from, you know, the early 2000s. And I was just worried with, I knew that inflation was looming. And I thought, you know, well, inflation's going to affect everything, including the price of a house. So I just thought it would just be better to have that asset so I could ride the wave of inflation if it did, you know, start moving. Because our, you know, our salaries aren't moving really upward at the same rate as the cost of living. I'm Trevor Tardif with Yeg Pro Realty, and I'm here with Ben Koshi, uh, who's a software developer who actually bought a house in the Edmonton area earlier this year. Uh, we worked together in the process of buying a house, and this is our kick up, kickoff episode of uh, the home buyer's journey where I want to have uh, conversations with real people that have bought recently, ask them how they made their key decisions uh, about financing, picking the right home, uh, which areas they're interested in, how they're navigating the whole market situation and uncertainty right now, uh, so that you, if you're looking to buy or sell in the near future, can l hopefully learn from their experience and uh, and help you make your decisions, essentially. So, Ben, thanks for, for joining me today, and uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for uh, talking to me. I'm happy to uh, share, uh, you know, my journey if that helps uh, anyone else. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I know I had a lot of fun working with you uh, over the last year. Like you just closed on your place. I think it was in was it March or April when you closed? Do you remember? Uh, um, what do you define as closed? Oh, when you took possession like, of the home, uh, like the, the like when you actually. Oh, okay, yeah. Got the keys. Um, so like May, yeah, right at the very end of May, so literally beginning of June. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we had started, if I remember correctly, searching for homes. Was it like late fall last year, or was it already like November? Yeah, I feel like it was uh, kind of uh, early November when we started. So. You know, uh, I don't remember. I, I don't think there was quite snow on the ground, but yeah, it was definitely uh, a late start. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, definitely I learned a lot about shopping uh, for homes in the off market. <laughs> so that was interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so, so what do you mean by the off market? Do you mean like when it wasn't as busy, <laughs> like, it had more time? Yeah. Like typically, I think most of the home buying happens from the spring to, you know, midsummer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then, you know, a lot of listings seem to come off, uh, you know, in the fall. And there was a lot, you know, compared to how, because our journey started, uh, sorry, ended uh, with the hot market coming online. Mm -hmm. So the difference between the number of listings coming online every week. Oh, yeah. You know, I was able to just look at two or three homes per week that kind of matched my criteria. Whereas... Um, you know, in the spring, it was like, okay, there's 10 homes now matching your criteria. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just takes a lot more time to scrutinize that many homes. Yeah, that, that's a good point. And, and we'll definitely get into some of that and how, especially how the market shifted. But one of the questions that I wanted to start with is, uh, why did you decide to buy a home in the first place? Oh, well, it's been on my list of uh, things to do um, for probably 20 years. Mm. Um, but the reason why I never pulled the trigger uh, was probably because I never thought I'd end up staying in Edmonton long term. Mm -hmm. So being a software developer, um, my skill set was more in demand in other cities, um, especially in the United States, Silicon Valley, you know, just other cities had a stronger kind of tech sector, mm -hmm. uh, specifically web tech, which is what, uh, you know, I specialize in. Uh, and uh, I never really thought that I would permanently end up in Edmonton. So I was mostly renting, a mix of renting and living with family kind of uh, over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, yeah, so then uh, when I, when the, when I guess the pandemic. No, this was pre-pandemic, right? I, can't remember. I, I think, uh, or right in the middle of it, because it would have been when you. Yeah, maybe we were. Yeah, yeah, because we had all the COVID protocols. Yeah, yeah, right. So it was it was the middle of pandemic. Um, yeah, so it basically, in the last few years, like remote work had really kind of uh, skyrocketed, especially for myself, mm -hmm. um, and I was working remotely quite successfully 
prior to the pandemic and then the pandemic just kind of cemented that and um, so then I realized you know what I can I probably will or can stay in Edmonton uh, my career is not going to pull me away most likely especially at my age and my, at the point in my career um, where it so, could start to make more you know, sense to actually just buy and, and set some deeper right. roots down yeah put some yeah. roots down the other thing too is you know I've I've gone through a couple doublings in in the price of Edmonton homes from you know the early 2000s and I was just worried with I knew that inflation was looming mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I thought you know well inflation is going to affect everything including the price of a house and uh, so I just thought it would just be better to have that asset so I could ride the wave of inflation if mm -hmm. it did you know start moving because our you know our salaries aren't moving really upward at the same rate as the cost of living yeah so, they definitely don't uh, seem to and I, I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up because that reminded me of like all the conversations that we had during your process of when you first started looking and when you actually bought your home uh, all that stuff was top of mind. We 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 both knew that they'd they'd printed a, a bunch of money uh, with the like the quantitative easing and everything. Interest rate rates had been low mm -hmm. for quite a while, and we knew that they were going to start raising it. So I, I can remember you and me. We had dozens of conversations about the, the market, inflation, trying to figure out okay, which way is this going to actually go? Uh, how far is it going to go? Right. Is now actually a good time to buy? So. Um, how, how did you manage that? Like that must have been stressful uh, trying to figure out if it was actually a good time to buy. Well, at the start of the journey, the interest rates were quite low. In, in fact, you know, you know, we, I remember right at the very start, you know, we were talking about mortgage rates around like 1.41% oh, wow. or something. Wow. <laughs> it um, sounds insane yeah, just now. Like it seems, seems like a fantasy world, right? Uh, I had a friend just walk in, you know, a few months prior to that and, and she got one for 1%. And so it, it yeah, obviously, um, yeah. But just I for reference, we're at like I, over five, like for a five year fix now, it's like 5% or more, or maybe 5.29, some, somewhere in that range now. Right. And, you know, I, you know, you know, talking with my banker, you know, he figures there's going to be one more raise and then we're going to enter a full blown recession and then they're going to start obviously reversing that. I've read some other, you know, documentation recently that said, um, you know, in, uh, high inflation um, is here to stay because we're, you know, our government debts uh, are just uh, massive. That's one way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's one way our, our debt to GDP ratio is over 300 percent where traditionally um, in a healthy economy and this is happening worldwide. This is not just it, Canada, yeah, it's not just Canada uh, yeah. or the U.S. Yeah. Um, so. Um, debt for nations have ballooned uh, over 300% and the healthy, I guess the healthy zone is 200 and I guess traditionally uh, and we're getting into some macroeconomic stuff now, mm -hmm. I guess the, the way that in, uh, uh, nations get out of debt is they inflate out of it. Yes. So they basically devalue the debt um, by inflating the money and uh, so... And we uh, talked about that, I know we had multiple conversations about that and that's part of how we've, you know yeah, I mean, it, for me, the little first-time home buyer, like, yeah, I, we're, I'm just a speck of sand in the sea of the financial, um, you know, uh, system. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely, you know, um, as the, my journey continued, it was definitely starting to look scary interest rate-wise. Oh, yeah. So it was really yeah. important. Yeah, it was really important for me. I think we started with an initial interest rate lock. So I got that pre-approval uh, I was working with Brian Mundo from the TMG group. Uh, he got me that, I think it was like a 2.45. So, so even in the, in the short, like six week span from the start of the journey, um, the interest rate doubled. So yeah. I locked it in for three months. And then of course, uh, that expired bef just before I bought the home. Yeah. Cause I, I, I remember there was a couple out. that you had yeah. considered, but you didn't feel like it was quite the right house. And so, I, I, if yeah. I remember correctly, well, you decided to wait. You're like, well, I, 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 I don't want to just rush into buying a house that's not the right one, just, just for the rate only, right? Just for the rate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was important to me because I'm, you know, I'm over 50. And so, I figure this is going to be 
kind of like my last home that I buy before I'm in the retirement home. Mm -hmm. um, if you're looking at buying or selling a home in the next year, it's important to know what's going on in the Edmonton housing market. So what I've done is I've created a new Facebook group where I will provide updates on a weekly basis on what I see happening in the Edmonton real estate market, as well as access to PDF reports each month that show you exactly what's been happening in the market over the last month and links to my latest YouTube videos where I go through an in-depth market analysis. Also going to be covering a lot of other stuff in that group. It's free to join the group. All you have to do is go to edmontonhousingmarket.ca Put in your email address and I'll send you an invitation to join the group. Again, that's edmontonhousingmarket.ca and then that way you can stay up to date on everything that's going on in the Edmonton real estate market. So uh, you didn't you didn't want to buy a home just for the interest rate. You so you didn't rush into a, a purchase. No, no, that wasn't the primary that wasn't the primary motivator. I would say like I didn't need a home at the time because I was uh, looking after my mother who is um you know going through early dementia mm -hmm. and so she wasn't officially allowed to live alone uh um so i was staying with her so i you know i didn't need a home right away um but it was just something that i wanted to have waiting for me and i just knew the clock was ticking on a number of factors um that could affect my affordability of purchasing the home that I wanted so mm -hmm. I just wanted to pull the trigger have that waiting for me um, you know and then you know just yeah depending on what happened with my mother you know um, at least that I would have that so whether I mm -hmm. rent it out or you know move into it you know yeah there was sort of you had multiple exit up. strategies if, if your situation changed mm -hmm. Um, so, right, so you exactly. already mentioned uh, that you got your pre-approval with Brian Mundo, who, who's a mortgage broker. What other yeah. sort of uh, financing options did you look into? Like, did you go to your bank or what, what made you decide to mm -hmm. go with the mortgage broker? You know, I'd been kicking around the idea of buying a home um, for a couple of years and I had visited my bank. Um, and you know what? Uh, I talked with the mortgage broker. I, you know, went through kind of like the document submission kind of uh, phase, but then I never really heard back from them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I wasn't like in a super like, you know, I think it was a busy time for them. And, uh, and I wasn't in a super like, I need to, I need to start shopping now mode yet. And I just wanted to make sure that the bank was cool and like, um, you know, what was the affordability like? Mm -hmm. What what kind of home could I afford? And this was prior to, uh, so, you know, letting your viewers know, I did win a little bit of money that helped with my, my down payment. So that was prior to that. Mm -hmm. So that affected my, my, my affordability as well. And uh, um, so, yeah, they just kind of dropped the ball. And honestly, the way Brian's system works, uh, you know, fully online with the online document submission. Um, he has these buckets where you just drag and drop documents into, so you know exactly what he's looking for, what he's waiting for, and until all those buckets are filled with with documents, you don't, you, you're, he can't move forward. Mm -hmm. So it just made it super clear on like, what you needed. Super easy, yeah. And I, I always had intended to go to a mortgage broker because even I had been told that. Um, even, I mean, even these mortgage brokers can negotiate a better rate with your bank than you can yourself. Um, I don't know if that's true. Mm. Um, but you know, I, you know, I wasn't picky about who was lending me the money for the house. So, um, you know, I've been hearing about mortgage brokers for years and it just made sense. Um, so to go that route. Yeah. Um, so it sounds know, like you yeah. already kind of knew you wanted to go that direction. Yeah, and it just was a little bit more of a personalized, like, go-getter service versus, like, a bank who doesn't really care, you know? Like, they, they're like, ah, okay, I, I'm not going to follow up with this guy. I've got other things to do. I don't know if that's what <laughs> No, it, it's in, funny in that you say situation. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, uh, but I, but oh, you, go ahead. you've got a person who's looking after you specifically for that need versus who knows what else this, this person is doing at the bank. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, like yeah. I do know, like a lot of a lot of people, they have a tendency to go to whatever bank that they've been working with. They feel like they have a relationship with their bank, so they go to their bank. Um, 
and uh, they feel like maybe because they've had this relationship with the bank that the bank's going to give them an amazing deal and, and, and that kind of thing. And mm-hmm. um, I usually tell people to at least check one other source. Like, yeah, it's okay if you want to go to your bank and find out what they can do for you, but there's a good chance if you go to a mortgage broker, since they work with half a dozen or, or maybe a dozen or more different lenders, they can shop around and, and find you uh, potentially a better rate or better mortgage terms. Um, sometimes at the same bank that you're, you're working with. Uh, mortgage brokers don't have access to all the banks and I, I'm not a mortgage expert so I, I can't remember which ones but there's some banks that don't have a mortgage broker arm so they they don't really offer their products through mortgage brokers so that that's another thing but um, oh interesting uh, but yeah thanks for kind of sharing what what made you decide to go with a mortgage broker um, and so moving forward obviously we work together to, to, to buy your house and, and you worked with me yeah uh, how did you find out about me in the first place um, yeah, so, you know, being a software developer, of course, I started my journey um, uh, on the web and, uh, of course, just using uh, the various websites. I'd always disliked uh, the limitations that uh, on Realtor.ca. Mm. There's, like, very um, basic search parameters that you can search for. And, um, obviously, because I was searching for houses... Um, you know, I was browsing the internet and of course your lovely face popped up <laughs> with a video ad. Uh, I can't remember what it was and I remember I think it was on YouTube. some keywords. It was it YouTube? Okay, yeah. so I must have been you know, you know how the ads follow you around, right? So yeah. I was watching a video and then suddenly, you know, your I could hear your voice and, and then I heard the word Edmonton, right? And then I was like, Okay, well that catches my my attention because okay, this is seems to be a local a local app yeah it wasn't just some big blanket blanket thing for all of canada but nowadays yeah yeah, nowadays people are 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 inserting like city words now into all their advertisements because they know that local flavor kind of catches people but yeah absolutely um, yeah so and then you were talking about uh i guess a a special website that you had set up Mm. um and uh and then I went to the site and yeah, it had, you know, way more features in terms of searchability that, you know, that, that, you know, satisfied my initial, you know, kind of look around. And so I was able to, you know, search a little bit more fine grained on some of the details I was looking for in a home and narrow down, you know, kind of, um, narrow down quickly uh, to a smaller subset of homes that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. And then of course I gave you a call based on that that's that's how i found you yeah and i felt like we hit it off pretty quickly uh, but once we started talking and uh like i mentioned earlier i really enjoyed working with you um moving into determining this type of home that you wanted to buy so what type of home did you want to buy and, and why yeah it, well i think that kind of um evolved as the journey kind of um progressed Um, because, uh, you know, at at first I had, you know, maybe I, I would say a little bit more grandiose, uh, um, (laughs) aspirations in terms of what I could afford. Mm. I think if you remember, we were looking at, you know, just shy of, there was a million dollar property and just shy of, we're kind of looking in that 900 to a million dollar range. And, uh, yeah, we um, were for a while, you know. Yeah, and again, because it was off market, there was just like, I think, you know, most of the listings were either, you know, fairly old, so they'd been left over from from the summer, and then there was occasionally a few listings that were just coming online, um, and yeah, you know, some of these homes were fantastic, um, but you know, again, I had it in my mind, if you're going to spend a million bucks on something, you know, it's got to be like near, it's got to be amazing. You're know, perfect. Okay. Yeah. There's, there's got to be no major hang up, um, with the home, you know, and, you know, I know, uh, we had found that, uh, nice, uh, bungalow, sorry, walkout bungalow. That was the other thing I was fixated on walkout bungalows. Mm. Um, so, so that was, that was like, that was my dream. It was like to have a basement that was usable with natural light. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that was kind of my goal was to, you know, get a walkout bungalow. And of course that really narrowed down 
uh, my search, right? Yeah, a lot. Um, yeah, there's not a ton of yeah, walkouts. Just, yeah, there's not a ton of walkouts, and you know, I I pretty much eliminated like going for a two story or one and a half story home. Uh, but I think we did kind of look at a couple of those. They ended up in the mix. Just well, there was that one that got away. That was uh, it was it was a bungalow, but it had that loft. Yeah, it was still listed as a bungalow, yeah. but it had that weird one bedroom and one washroom upstairs, no hallway, nothing. It was yeah, like, so like I, I would have, if I listed that myself, I would have been tempted to call it a bungalow as well, because it it it, it right. fits more with the bungalow buyer in general. You just have like an extra bonus room right. up top, essentially. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the cool thing about that house, yeah, it wasn't as uh, ready to go or modern appointments, but. It was it was nice. It had that custom barrel ceiling, which I'd never seen before. Yeah. And that is another thing that I really, because this was my first and probably last home purchase, I wanted something that um, was unique. Mm -hmm. So I really was shying away from anything that was like cookie cutter home builder uh, kind of stuff, um, you know. And so I was looking for something that would make that unique. And that that particular property had a had a whole english style pub yeah in as the walkout which was you pretty know, cool cool tables and chairs and fireplace and and a nice bar and everything it was it was amazing and like awesome yeah, yard too been, if i remember the yard yeah. was pretty cool oh yeah i mean yeah the yard was small and it was very well appointed and uh it was a perfect fit for for the for entertaining and I think we just um, got to that one too late. Know, I think by the time we saw it, it was it, yeah. they had already accepted an offer or something. And that was that was my fault. Uh, I kept I kept. Um, so this is some advice I would pass: be as liberal as you can with your parameters, because you never know what like um, home might be sitting on the fringes of your. Yeah, church. was that one? Uh, it was based on was it year built? There was some, it was something like that. It was either no, year built yeah, or no, size. No, no, it was. It was the reason why was I had seen a number of homes in Haddo and I had excluded Haddo oh, from the Oh, yes, search. that's what it was. And because I just felt like it was kind of a 90s aesthetic. Yeah. And I wasn't expecting to see that unique of a home out of Haddo and, um, at the time. And uh, so then, yeah, I think I just one day frustrated because... Uh, I wasn't finding what, you know, that, that house I was looking for. So I started expanding my search parameters and immediately this one had come up and it was already like 120 days on the market. Mm -hmm. And literally we went and saw, I put in an offer and we were told an offer just came in the day before. And yeah. it was like Murphy's Law, <laughs> right? You know, I was like, this was sitting under our noses the whole time. And, um, you know, uh, so... Yeah. So how did you pick so, an area? So like you mentioned Haddo. So for anybody that's watching that's not familiar, that's sort of in the Riverbend Twilliger area, southwest Edmonton. Um, was it easy for me right from the beginning to know what parts of Edmonton you were interested in? Yeah, so uh, again, that progressed too. So I was mainly focusing on southwest with a tiny little keep an eye on Millwoods because I grew up there, mm -hmm. um, you know, but, but mostly the southwest. Um, and I, you know, like I said, I was excluding certain areas like Twilliger Town. I wasn't a fan of like just knowing all the traffic driving to friends' house in there. I know it was super tight in the winter time, so more I dense than you wanted it to area. be. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Haddo because I knew the style of home that was in there. Um, yeah, so it was mostly southwest, including the deep southwest. So originally, I had included Windermere. And the newer areas that were south of the Anthony Hendy. Yeah, which are very popular and, areas uh, as well. Yeah, very popular areas. But as we learned, driving to Windermere a few times, um, traffic uh, is becoming a problem. And now they're expanding the, the Hendy, but I don't think that's going to resolve the local neighborhood problem. So, um, yeah, so I just said, you know what? I don't want to be stuck driving this extra 15 minutes just to get to the point where I could be. Mm -hmm. So let's just, let's just eliminate anything outside of the hand day. We're going to stay inside of the hand day. And cause I'm not a, I, I don't drive a lot, but when I do drive, I just 
want it to be as convenient as possible and mm -hmm. as accessible as possible. I remember you also uh, considered Cameron Heights for a while, but then ended up deciding that was a little bit too far from family, I think it was, right? Yeah, it was a little bit, you know, deceiving. Um, like, I like the isolation of Cameron Heights. And the other benefit is that um, crime is very low there because it's probably <laughs> middle of nowhere central. almost. Yeah, like there's no reason to yeah, go there exactly. unless you need to. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nobody's really passing through Cameron Heights, right? So, um, so I, I, you know, I did uh, look at, you know, I loved the neighborhood. It was a little bit, you know, very, um, for, a, I, when was Cameron Heights built? Um, uh, I think they started it kind of in the early 2000s. A lot of stuff's there built like 2006, 2007. There's a lot of that. Right, uh, right. There is some newer stuff as well. They still had larger, like larger, more spacious planning. Whereas everything nowadays tends to focus on density. Yes. So I so I, so it was nice to see kind of more modern homes, uh, and still they're built still building in Cameron Heights. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and just a little bit more spacious in terms of the roadways, which I enjoy as a, you know, with all our snow banks and all of that. It just gives room for more roadage in the winter time. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, because uh, some of the newer yeah. neighborhoods that are a bit more densely populated, when you get lots of snow, you end up with like these big piles of snow uh, that take up all the extra parking sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so Cameron Heights, uh, I just like the style of the neighborhood, the style of the homes in that area. Um, it did end up being a little too far uh, of a drive, and of course, through the Hen Day, which can be problematic so if there's anything going on with the hen day and i think that's one of those neighborhoods where there's only one in and one out yeah that and basically yeah from i think it's cameron heights drive yeah or whatever it's called right yeah. on the hen day yeah so you know that's that didn't bother me so much but you know i know that other neighborhoods have have run into problems when you know there's issues going on like accidents and you know some sort of major event and you know the roads are shut down for some reason yeah so. you can you can get stuck <laughs> for, yeah, with no yeah, other choice sometimes so yeah yeah and there's no there's no convenient like grocery shopping there wasn't stores weren't like in there was just very like strip malls in the in the neighborhood so you really have to leave the bulk of the neighborhood and uh, journey for a few minutes uh, which is not a big deal I guess um, but yeah, it just seemed like a little bit too isolated, mm -hmm. and, uh, a little further than my mom uh, from my mom's place, because I knew I'd be journeying back and forth quite a bit, you know, mm -hmm. um, to her place. So, how many how many homes do you think we 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 looked at that we physically looked at? Um, yeah, I was surprised. Like, I was like, when is this guy gonna uh, say no, Ben? You you need to you need to figure out. <laughs> like, I would say. Um, I want to say we looked at least 30 or 40. Do you have any? I, I don't have a record. I, I was kind of curious yeah. just to, of how, like, um, that's it, my could, it could be. Maybe we it, looked at 100. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, online, like you probably looked at hundreds. Probably. Online. Yeah. But in person, it, it was a good chunk because sure. it was over and six I tried months or to so. Be, I tried to be judicious with your time. Like, I was like, do I really want this house? Is it worth, you know, calling my realtor out to see this? And, you know, and I would chat with you sometimes about properties mm -hmm. and you would always be like, let's go see it. Let's go see it. And I'm like, are you sure? Because I'm not sure about this. And you're like, no, let's go see it. And so you were always kind of like, I think I probably saw an extra 10 houses because of your, you know, let's just go see it. You know, because, yeah, if you were being bothered by it, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I didn't want to... Uh, you know, waste your time. That yeah, I remember very, you being very concerned about that. And yeah. uh, uh, like I said, yeah. we had lots of fun. So I always enjoyed going yeah. out and showing you places. Um, yeah. And there was a lot of different sort of competing factors. It was like the, the shifting market. Maybe that'd be a good thing to talk about again. It's pretty crazy sure. that from when you started looking, not only were interest rates incredibly low, but it was a buyer's market. Not that there was a ton to yeah. choose from. I do I do remember you making comments about it feels like it's just all the leftover inventory. It's like the corner lots and the corner yeah. lots. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like half the houses we looked at were corner lots uh, in the in the winter yeah, months. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And then seeing how it shifted once we got into late January and February. That's when we started having conversations yeah. where I was like, whoa, I think we're going to have a housing shortage here because I saw how few listings were coming on and how what was yeah. left was starting to get bought up. And it was a little scary there for a while. I was like, what's this going to look like? 
um, yeah. while wanting to still take advantage of the, the interest rate hold that you had. So that added some undue stress to the, to whole, to the whole process. Uh, but right. the market changed so much from from when you started to when you bought, and then even since then, it's changed a lot as well. So w- one of the things I wanted to ask you is, do you have any regrets uh, from from when you bought? Do you feel like you made a, a mistake, or are you at peace with how the market shifted? Maybe you could have bought the same house now for less at a way higher interest rate, or you would have bought something else altogether. How do you actually feel about it in hindsight? Um. In hindsight, um, no, I have no regrets. I find it, I find it. I found uh, kind of my dream house, like um, just landed in my lap, you know. And uh, yeah, I was getting, I was kind of getting ready to give up on the search, I think, because um, all the signals from 2007 were firing again, mm-hmm. um, you know, because I was losing homes to like no inspection, no financing conditions, like. You know, uh, I was getting shotgunned before, like, remember that one house uh, in the West End where he said, we're taking offers on Wednesday, <laughs> you know, because the market was so hot and we had our offer ready and they're like, oh, we sold it on Tuesday. Someone offered like 30 grand or 40 grand over the list price. And like cash and or something. Just take it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like this is a total mirror of back when. I was shopping uh, with my sister for her home back in 2007, I think it was. And she was worried. Yeah, uh, she. I remember that some of the people that were you were talking yeah. to were being like, I don't know, I think this is the peak and yeah. that kind of thing, right? And, and, and we bought an investment property for my mom at the time. And again, right at the peak. And then literally, we both buy houses. Boom. The market shuts down. The financial crisis happens. You know, we instantly probably lost like... 75 grand on both of our homes Mm. like so you know which didn't end up making a big deal because she kept her home long term and now it's kind of recovered you know to you know to back to where she bought it at but it took 15 years you know yeah well and that's a it's a relevant fear and i and i I think it's something a lot of uh buyers that either bought this year or are considering buying are actually struggling with on like a daily or weekly basis like is now actually a good time nobody wants to buy a house and then see the value go down shortly after um a lot of people are on the fence i think you yeah you went through a period or multiple periods where you were kind of on the fence again where you weren't sure like okay like is this too crazy should i wait to see what happens or or should i actually still buy my sister was just yelling at me like don't like stop she was like don't buy any more houses like like don't look at any more houses like the market is too crazy and uh but then you know and you you thought i was crazy too because i kept bidding under list because i was so spoiled (laughs) buyer's market earlier in the year yeah yeah and you're like ben you're not gonna get this house for that and uh so i started offering list prices which is you know i think all i could muster you know (laughs) uh, coming from my my immigrant roots right Uh, yeah i always need a discount but uh and and the um, house that you actually yeah. ended up buying there uh, initially there were multiple offers on it right? Yeah, I think there were there were like uh, three offers and they accepted one that was over list and we lost out on it and that was kind of when I was like I saw the house I loved it I don't think I'm gonna see another house like this and you know I was kind of dejectedly browsing the <laughs> listings like two weeks later right and then i saw the house on the market again yeah and i was like what and then what I was happened like, text text trevor i'm like what the heck is this like why is this house on the market and why why did they contact us right? yeah and uh and then you found out it just got listed again and um yeah and so i upped my offer a little bit uh it was still below list but uh they you know and i took off the inspection condition mm-hmm. Right, so I was like, okay, you know what? Trying to make it a little Let's bit just, sexier, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Match the market. There's no way I could take off the financing condition. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. So and they accepted my offer right away. So that was uh, that was uh, 
you know, I'm real fortunate, I think. I'm not just a character on YouTube. I also play a realtor in real life. I'm an agent with Yeg Pro Realty here in Edmonton. So if you're looking to buy or sell a home in the Edmonton area, including acreages outside of Edmonton, I encourage you to give me a call at 780-819-5508, or you can book a time on my calendar at booktrevornow.com. All you have to do is select a time on my calendar and I will call you for a free consultation. There's absolutely no pressure. I just wanna connect with you, find out how I can help you, and if you end up wanting to work with me in the future, whether that's right away, three months, six months, a year from now, that's totally fine. I just wanna help you however I can. So go to booktrevornow.com, select a time on my calendar, and I'm looking forward to speaking with you. And, and so which neighborhood did you end up buying in, if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, so I was still kind of in the, what I call Southwest Central, uh, so it was Steinhauer. Mm -hmm. uh, most people don't really know it. I usually have to say, oh, it's near Duggan. <laughs> most people know Duggan, but uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a little, uh, uh, you know, a little uh, lesser known neighborhood, but... Uh, and it's a little bit yeah, older, older, too. neighborhood. Yeah, like it, yeah, it, it is more it central. Is. Like what, what year uh, was your house built? Do you remember? Uh, 1977. Yeah. And yeah, most of the houses around here are 70s builds, uh, maybe, you know, 1980, you know, early 80s, and uh, which is totally the kind of style of home I grew up in. Uh, and I r remarked as soon as I, you know, saw the place, this looks exactly like my parents' home. Except completely <laughs> renovated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, except for, yeah, uh, theirs was a one and a half story. Like inside, it's completely different. Yeah. But, um, on the on the outside, uh, the aesthetics are very similar. Yeah. And um, But it's kind of, it feels a little bit like home because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm happy that I'm living in that home that looks like the home I grew up in. Yeah, so, although there's that nostalgia you know, aspect too. I don't know if that's even the right word to describe it, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so um, you ended up buying a house that was old. Like initially when you far, first started looking, you weren't considering homes built in the 70s, 80s, or even 90s almost. So that was, that yeah, was like a part yeah. of an evolution of, of your criteria. Yeah, and I missed out. I honestly missed out. Again, this goes back to the advice I give to anybody else listening is be flexible with your criteria because I don't know I had it in my head modern building codes you know let's make sure that we're you know at least the very late 90s to you know have all the latest you know plumbing and whatever that might be good for a home that's supposed to last you for another 50 years or, mm -hmm. or whatever without some major you know rework or um, or maybe any risk right you know you know, my friends had just renovated their home and they'd found an entire wall full of asbestos. Fun times. And that home <laughs> was, that was a bungalow in the 60s. So they had to totally, they had to vacate their property and uh, deal to with To be able to take the wall out, yeah, uh, to do the remediation yeah, and everything. Wall out, yeah, exactly. So uh, I just didn't want to end up in a similar situation, you know, and I've heard about some some fire uh fireproofing that apparently is carcinogenic and it's like depending on which rock mine or whatever it was they were pulling the stuff out of the ground if it has asbestos uh, or not radio, yeah yeah or radioactive material i can't remember <laughs> what it was but you know i was trying to avoid all those complications right and uh no it turned out when i lowered my my year search as you know i even included the 50s i think there was some real gem properties that had been totally gutted completely renovated and just were like amazing mm -hmm. and the prices were were excellent as well and so i was really blown away by that so yeah um and so then i started seeing more properties that matched my criteria and also looked spectacular satisfied that criteria of like this is unique it's a unique home um, and uh, yeah, that that so, is one thing you will get more of if you go and look at older houses, especially if they're old enough where they would have gone through a renovation or two. Is they do start to yeah. get a lot more unique than just a, a typical newer home. Yeah, yeah. So the finishings tend to, you know, they tend to be creative with some of the issues or uh, decisions that they had to make and sometimes those decisions turn out to be really great mm -hmm. and they really accentuate you know uh, the home you know like for example leaving a decorative pole in the middle of the home but they do something cool with it you know um, yeah so there was yeah there was definitely uh, 
you know, a lot more homes in the older category that I would have would have totally purchased. In fact, I made made a couple offers on but the hot market didn't let me have them. So, yeah. yeah, well, it's a much different situation now. So it, it is cool to hear that you um, don't have any regrets. I wanted to honestly ask you that question because I know that it, it was a bit of an emotional roller coaster this whole last year, and it still is for yeah. buyers now. So it, I'm happy to hear that there was no regrets. Um, I know interest rates went up a lot higher than at least I was initially anticipating, and maybe you, if I remember correctly, too. So. Um, it's it's pretty crazy yeah I was getting yeah I was getting worried about um, I was getting worried about uh, interest rates for sure and yeah they were affecting my affordability which was pushing me so remember when we started around the million dollar mark mm -hmm. and we were entertaining homes there is no way that I could have afforded any of those homes so and I'm so glad that I ended up closer to the seven hundred thousand dollar mark because it's given me so much more breathing room in terms of uh, expenditure and cost and and I got the home of you know I think my dreams like um, you know I'm not done with this home like in terms of renovation it was turnkey you know the way I got it but I'm already planning um, some, some it's hard not some, to I think yeah it's hard not to you want to make it your own put your own signature on it even though it was so well done uh, to begin with but uh, yeah, it, it, it allows me uh, that, that extra budget to, to you know, uh, do even more with the home. Mm -hmm. and, and what would you say to someone that's on the fence right now about buying a home and they're concerned about the market, uh, interest rates, if they should you know, wait to see if the market comes down a bit more in price or if they would buy now, what would, what would you do if you were just entering the market now? Well, that's 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 going to be hard for me to uh, advise someone because the interest rates have gone up so much, and I'm not entire. I haven't done the math, mm. like so. I don't know like how much affordability, and it depends on their you know, depends on their individual situation as well. Um, I think uh, you know, the sooner you buy a home is always better. Mm. Um, you know, just because especially with the inflation uh, um, just driving prices up everywhere you know those you know if you're looking at new home builds it's driving up the cost and the supply chain issues driving up the cost mm -hmm. everywhere right so the cost of new builds is going to be higher um, you know I would I would maybe even look at you know um, you know look at being a little bit more lax with your what you'll accept because I think because of those high prices, I think that's driving buyers out of the market, and then you should be able to get a more uh, aggressive or competitive price on homes you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. You know better than me what the state of the market is. Like, are people just panic buying? You know, because of inflation, or are they holding off because of high interest rates? There's always that tug of war. Yeah, I felt like. Well, it's, it's yeah. definitely it's it's a uh, buyer's market now, so it it has completely okay. shifted again, where it's uh, a buyer's market, and uh, we have seen prices come down. I do I do think the the higher price properties are a little bit more vulnerable to that, just because the interest rates have gone up so much. Uh, so there's less right. buyers in that market than there were before. Um, but I haven't, I don't really feel like the new build prices have come down that much. Like they, they have, but, uh, and I don't know the inner workings of, of specific builders or not, but they're still usually priced higher than the same home that was built five years ago, essentially, um, because right. of the issues that you mentioned, I believe. And they can only go so low uh, before it just doesn't yeah. make financial yeah. sense for them. Um, but yeah. for what I'm seeing in the market now, I do see a lot more people sort of on the fence and they're almost like paralyzed. Um, on like if they should buy now or if they should wait to see if prices come down and I try to educate people on it's not just about the price it is also about the interest rate so if you think yes. the rates will keep going up then even if the market does go down that doesn't necessarily mean it's better to wait because affordability takes yeah. a hit as well so yeah. it's tough for people I think we're, we're hitting I think we're hitting a peak on in, in interest rates the only question now is how fast and how far will it go down um, we might be the interest in rates time where interest rates might hang out at you know three percent permanently for a few years like um, you know so yeah it's it's yeah and who knows what's on the horizon I mean 
we've got so many macroeconomic uh, uh, factors that are still in play, like the war in Ukraine and, you know, North Korea ramping up the rhetoric and, you know, you know, China saber rattling and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, stuff going on. So yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to, to juggle all that. And I, I think it's pointless to try and time any of that. Mm. Um, so I think, I think, you know, it really depends. Like, you know, if, if you're just buying an intermediate home, you, you could probably be less, more, more flexible with your, with your, with your criteria. I mean, but if you're looking for your forever home, it's hard not to, you know, still be picky and try to get, you know, you know, the right home for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, it was interesting that you had mentioned earlier that, uh, or you said something along the lines of like, it's the sooner you buy a home, the better. So why do you believe that? Well, just because I've, I've, you know, even, even though, you know, my sister and my mom bought, you know, properties at the height of the market, you know, uh, if you're keeping those properties long term, all of that kind of like evens out and washes away, mm -hmm. um, you know, and you're building equity in your own home, you know, which is, you know, uh, just nice uh, to know that one day you won't have to pay rent or a mortgage, you know, uh, towards, you know, the later part of your life. And it gives you a lot more, f you know, financial freedom. So um, a financial flexibility, right? Yeah, yeah, versus if you're on the fence and you're just renting still, that's still money that you're just spending that, that's not right. going to build you any equity or mortgage pay down right. at all. Yeah, and especially with, um, you know, the the other big thing that I was always balancing was investments versus the money that I would put into a home and uh, the money that we would put into a home, you could invest and grow better than a home would return. Um that's kind of always been uh, a tough uh, thing for me to swallow that a home is an investment because every investment seminar that you go to, what is the first thing they tell you? Your home is not an investment. Yeah. And I, and, and I honestly can, can agree with that because if I look at my mom, okay, she bought her home in the 1980s for $140,000. Um, she sold it in uh 2012 around 2012 2013 for close to around four hundred thousand dollars and it was a you know one and a half story five bedroom home a fairly large huge yard in mill woods and uh she goes look at all the money i made i made like you know 400 minus 140 you know th this yeah. is why a home is a good good investment and i go mom is it a good investment what can you go out and buy if you wanted to go and buy another home what can you go out and buy with this now 400,000 can you go out and buy two homes now no no you just can another only similar buy home. the very exact same home that you just sold so really it was a wash right and then of course she spent money on interest um, that you know is washed away uh, out of the you know that deducts from that so I thought that was a perfect example of why a home's not an investment. Um, but of course we have these weird uh, markets like in Toronto and in Vancouver and you know, where, you know, you're seeing a lot of people and we saw a few buyers coming from Ontario because mm -hmm. they were down flipping their houses into us into a smaller market. Yeah. So they were selling their homes for, you know, a million dollars, which was just a, a shack on the side of the road <laughs> and buying a mansion in Edmonton, right? For 700 grand. And get way, and be, way better bang for your buck. Yeah. And then pocketing 300 grand, you know, and uh, I had multiple you know, buyers so from it, BC uh, this year. Yeah. Right. And BC's, uh, you know, I lived in Vancouver for 10 years and we were thinking about buying back you know, it had already tripled in BC and we, we were like, my, my realtor was telling us, don't buy, it's going to crash. It's going to crash. And then it triples again, <laughs> like over, you know, yeah. as, as of today. So the home that we, we did end up like my girlfriend and I at the time did end up buying a house for about 400,000. And we thought it was the top of the market. It was a condo 
And now I see listings in her building for 1.2 million. Yeah. So those are, I think, mostly aberrations, and they, and, and, and it is you're getting into market. speculative territory in those markets. But there's right. there's some big yeah. forces at at play there. Um, yeah. So okay, so let, let me try to just ask you a couple of questions about that. So you never sure. liked looking at uh, in buying a home as an investment because, uh, if I understood you correctly down the road even if it appreciates or inflates in value and you sell it you can all you can do is go buy another home that's the same essentially that's right, right. Yeah. so is that not yeah. even looking Unless at the I difference downshift. in returns like if versus if you put instead of putting it uh, in a house you put it in you know the S&P 500 or, or something like that right yeah like the S&P 500 was insane for the last 15 years like the return on that was was unprecedented we had a bull run uh, that was insane so had you followed that advice yeah you could have bought two homes mm -hmm. uh, just solely investing but now I think we're entering a long term kind of uh, a bear phase uh, where you know no, no you know there's no growth there's there's really no the tech sector is getting clobbered like where is going to be it's, it's just too hard for the average uh, person to really you know get the full return you know uh, so some of those uh, the, the pieces of advice that ha that uh, may have been good for the last 15 to 20 years, it's a little bit more questionable yeah. if, if the next 10 or f 5 to 10 or 15 yes. years is going to be the same thing or if it might like, not. Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is that I'm, I'm just happy I have it as an inflation hedge, you know. So, you know, if, if, if inflation just forces prices to rise, just naturally at least i have this asset that's rising with it mm -hmm. um you know um so i don't have to worry about that because it's kind of a fixed asset um whereas now in the stock market i have to make more than six percent return you know to 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 be above water to have the same buying power just because right? of inflation so just because of inflation yeah uh, so that's not even making money on my on my on my investments, and you know pulling a six re a percent return, you know two years ago was was great. You know that's that's all you were basing your retirement on, but not when inflation's sitting you know this high. And if you know if there's going to be some structural changes that are going to keep inflation at three or four percent, um, I think uh, everyone's going to have to relook at how they invest their money. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's just, it's just one other part of the, the uncertainty yeah. puzzle right now. Um, yeah. So, so what other? And I am not a financial. Oh know, yes, yeah. We're we're just that's financial. Absolutely. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> just yeah. in case anybody's yeah. getting the wrong idea. Yeah. But the, these are the. Yeah. I think it's good to, it, like five years ago or ten years ago, the, these weren't even part. This wasn't even part of the conversation that people had when they were buying a home, but because there's yeah. been so much going on in yeah. the market and the, and the world and, and all that kind of stuff, all of a sudden buying a home has turned into this like very complex decision where <laughs> you're yeah. trying to like it, people well, used to like they got their money, they saved up a down payment and they bought a home when they were ready. And I'm still tempted yeah. to advise people to, to do that as long as they don't stretch themselves too thin. Um, make sure that yeah. you you know you're not buying the absolute max that you can, and then you're everything's super tight. But yeah, yeah. you're not going to be able to time it. Yeah, you absolutely. mentioned it too. You're not you're not going to time the exact right yeah. time to buy. Uh, see, I would I would actually give the opposite advice. Stop. Don't worry about all of that. Focus on like if if you're just buying a home for yourself and not investment purposes, um, just just go out there and get you know the best value for your you know for your buck that you can get mm. you know in five years time you'll get a chance to renegotiate the mortgage um hopefully at a lower rate um yeah i could definitely see some people just trying to ride it out for lower interest rates might be worth renting for a few more years you know uh and see where the rates land um you know so so but yeah unfortunately we can't predict the world is unpredictable humans are unpredictable um, you never know like what's going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. we, we still, you know, my big worry is, you know, yeah, we have another major election coming up in the United States and, you know, that seems to affect us quite a bit. So, mm -hmm. um, at least, yeah, as a country, I think, I think that's really good but, advice. Uh, actually, yeah. uh, what you're, what you're suggesting is don't, don't make your home purchase about like 
all the, all the, the world yeah the yeah, world, the world issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah just find the right home for you and you know uh you know if you're keeping it long term you know that's that's gonna it's all gonna wash out in the end mm -hmm. you know and and do you think there's some other probably, psychological you know, benefits to owning a home like so we've talked about it from an investment perspective and how it maybe shouldn't be yeah. focused on that so much yeah. But what about, like, do you see value in actually owning your home versus renting uh, from, like, a psychological or a well-being perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, one of the things I keep mentioning and I just keep thinking about is, like, I don't ever have to move again. Mm. You know, like, like I've moved around quite a bit in the last 10 years, uh, you know, moving back from Vancouver and then you know, originally just bouncing, you know, moving in with mom and then moving out for a few years and then moving back in with mom because of her health issues. Um, so I've moved like maybe five, six times. Mm. I'm so sick of moving. And, you know, all my Ikea furniture that I dragged from province to province to house to house just slowly disintegrates, right? Yeah. <laughs> so now I can, now I can buy like nice furniture that's, you know, not going to get damaged in a move. Yeah, you don't have to worry about how am I actually going to move this huge, heavy thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say, you know, if there was anything that doesn't give me that great a peace of mind is, you know, of course, utility and taxes and all of that is is on the rise. So it is becoming more expensive to be a homeowner in the home. Mm. So uh, as you said, uh, don't don't make it so tight that, you know, uh, that you don't have very much wiggle room. Uh, uh, so try to find, you know, a house that you can live comfortably in and you won't be house poor. So, mm -hmm. no, that's awesome. And what, is there anything that we, uh, in, in your whole home buying, home buying journey that we didn't talk about that you think would be good to talk about or share or that would help other people? Hmm. That's a good question. I think we, I think we we're both kind of analytical people and I think we talked through everything that you know could possibly happen I mean I guess the only other thing that I didn't mention is that um, there were a few properties that were income properties mm -hmm. which were actually really interesting there was that one property where I actually wanted to live in the actual rental part and rent out the full home yeah was that one of those really big houses those, on the west end or no, it was in an older neighborhood, like, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, over by 119th, like, Royal Gardens area. Oh. Um, and it had it had a garage that had converted into a garden suite. Oh, okay. But they had done such a phenomenal job on it that, you know, it was like its own luxury condo on its own. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll just rent out the main home and live in this little cute little condo because... You know, I'm here by myself. And, and then you had the you know, flexibility where later you could move into the home. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And and it just made the affordability so much better. Uh, like, yeah. And that was that was one of the homes that just got bought, like, straight up cash. Yeah. So there was no chance. <laughs> yeah. So we couldn't even, you know, our offer was immediately rejected. So, um, so that's something you yeah. think people should maybe consider if they have the means? Well, and... I, you know, I don't think it's as common. Like, uh, when I watch, uh, you know property shows in Canada, especially down east, uh, there's a lot of properties that are outfitted with uh, income properties. And, uh, you know, definitely, you know, with the transit and the mobility issues that this city is built, uh, you know, on a sprawl, uh, I don't think it's as, uh, you know, it's just, it's just wonderful when you do find those properties. But um, all I can um, say is, sometimes you just have to be a little bit creative uh, maybe there's a home that you really 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 enjoy and maybe it, all it will take is a fifty thousand dollar renovation mm -hmm. to suddenly bring in that extra five hundred dollars a month that really opens up your affordability you know and so you know look at all the possibilities there's there's i've even thought about uh building a, a garden suite in my in my yard which you could um, yeah which I could because the yard is kind of structured in a very unique way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we, we, I think we're pretty spoiled in Alberta, but maybe we need to start thinking a little bit outside the box like everyone has done down east to, uh, you know, make, 
living more affordable, more dense. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. that's the only thing that I would, you know, think about. That kind of like entered late into 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 my journey. So. Yeah, I, I remember you considering that. And then in terms of renovations, that's something we didn't talk about either. I know there were several houses that we looked at that weren't quite perfect for you that you considered, yeah. okay, well, what would this look like if I did a renovation? And lots of times it looked like it would just be too expensive and not worth the hassle. And that's something I see yeah. a lot of buyers have to struggle with. Most people tend to not want to have to do any work at all. They want it to be move-in ready. Um, and then there's some people where I feel like they could probably expand their criteria a little bit if they considered uh, properties that might need a little bit of a little bit of work because then that you can get creative and, and find some other options there. You know, now that I actually own a home, I'm not as scared of about renovations or doing a renovation mm -hmm. as um, because I've learned so much about this home and just, you know, um, you know, you learn about the bones of the home and how everything's wired together and it, it's starting to pull away this kind of curtain of renovations and now I'm starting to actually like my my YouTube channels are now filled with do-it-yourself renovation projects and all sorts of cool stuff like this. And you can learn so much I'm from like, those wow. channels. Yeah, and I just didn't have a home to kind of imagine that, right? So if this is not your first home, you're probably familiar with that, probably not as afraid. Uh, but because I had really not, I've never really been a, a homeowner per se, um, you know, it was always my parents' domain. Um, it wasn't until I got really comfortable with like looking at how this house was put together and how, how they did the renovations. It's starting to pull back kind of the fear, uh, that curtain of mystery. Mm. And now I'm like, yeah, now I'm actually considering doing a bunch of renovations myself or now I can more meaningfully engage with um, a contractor and say, you know, I've looked at this and this is how the house is wired. And, you know, uh, one big advantage of the bungalow is you can get into the ceiling and you can do a lot more because you have that ceiling access. Um, so that, you know, that is one one act, uh, mm. you know, benefit. Um, You've got the time and the space to like actually really think yeah. about it and versus if you haven't bought a place yet and then it's like, okay, am I wasting a contractor's time by trying to get there? Am I rushing into this to, right. to get a quote? And there's just so many like, you know, like I just had no inkling of like, I didn't have a list of good contractors that I could fall upon, how busy they were, how expensive they were. I had no inkling about that. Um, now, you know, if a house just needs a paint job and a maybe change out the carpets, those those things are are, are fairly you know easy. Yeah, those are some of the but easiest of course, things you know, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, like it's 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 opened up on this whole new world of possibility for me owning a home in terms of how I can upgrade and, and make this home perfect for myself. Um, so. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to being a homeowner. I feel like I'm getting off of video games and uh, kind of maturing a little bit. And, 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 <laughs> I don't have got time for video games. I got to take care of this house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of what is happening. Uh, the other warning I will I will put out there is that owning a home does require care and maintenance. You are finding yourself doing a lot more work around the house. Uh, uh, little necessary things like, you know, uh, winterizing the air conditioning unit and, you know, uh, you got to take care of these little things uh, and just keep an eye on your home and make sure it's uh, safe and try to intercept any problems. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And with it's, e it's homes, easier to care about those less. things when it's your home too, right? Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 I'm looking forward to being a homeowner. That's awesome. Well, I think we, we covered all types of stuff today, Ben, and thanks for being uh, my guinea pig on, on the, the first home buyer's journey episode. It was uh, really enjoyable for me. Um, and any clo closing remarks before we go? No, I, I just want to thank you sincerely for all the help that you uh, gave me and all the advice. You were, like I said, you were always never, uh, you never gave me any indication that I was wearing you out or wearing you down, and I appreciate all the work uh, that you did and uh, I appreciate that you know we can speak at a fairly technical level about 
lots of issues uh, you know <laughs> that were going through my mind and uh, uh, no I want to I want to thank you for finding uh, uh, my dream home I appreciate it and uh, yeah that's all I have to say Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Ben. Um, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. And for anybody that's watching, uh, if you like this type of content, make sure to let us know in the, in the, in the comments below. Uh, hit that like button and subscribe, and we will see you on the next video.